good morning, everybody. I have to tell you, I like it that people sit in other people's spots in the pews so that others have to scoot someplace else. I think it's kind of fun. Hey! Hey, guys. Yeah, all right. Glad you're here. All right. Hopefully, when you walked in, you grabbed one of the bulletins. Before we get to... Oh, Tim, there's bulletins back there. Uh... Before we get to uh, the announcements, would you guys sing a song with me? No. We got to know. Anybody have a yes? All right. So, you guys are just looking at me. Ready? Let's, let's sing this song, all right? We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. All right, yeah. Uh, now, let's take a look at the bullet, back of the bulletin. We'll take a look at some of the announcements. There's really not that many, everybody. Uh, so we are having a board meeting directly after the service this morning. But uh, tonight, Bible study and youth at 6. And then if... Um, uh, all announcements for the lamplighter need to be in by this Wednesday. And then um, the His Glory uh, will be meeting this Wednesday night as well at 7 o'clock. So that is all of the announcements that I have. So if you would please stand as we sing our first song. Jesus, 
Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. Jesus was here, he performed many, many miracles, mainly because we go by sight, hearing, feeling, and it brought about a word called faith. But you know, the greatest miracle of all happened in light of last week, Resurrection Sunday. It's when Christ was resurrected. He gave us what? New birth. New spiritual birth. When Christ overcame death, the sinful body that we were born in from Adam was overcame. Victory over death. That's what this cross stands for. And he gives us what? The hope of the future. As he was raised, he made the promise that we will be also 1 Peter says in first one, chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Today as we commune with our Lord, remember him with thanksgiving for all he's done for us. Let us pray. Father, we praise you, God the Father. Glory to your Son for his willingness to go to the cross. Be with us now as we remember his love for all. In your name we pray. Amen. The emblems are in the front and the back.
several weeks ago I was listening and watching music on on, on YouTube and, and the song came on and of course we all if you grew up in the church you know the doxology you know that saying you know the but then there's this song that I started watching I'm like man we got to do that and there's you know you'll know the the main words you it's a little bit different of a flow but there's a course in there that I want you to listen to and then we're going to listen to the course maybe once maybe twice and then we're going to start the song from the very beginning but listen to what he's singing here watch what he's singing and when we go through the song I hope it impacts you too so here's the chorus to the song Holy Ghost. Praise. Praise, praise the Father praise the Son praise the Spirit now with us every moment all our God be praised, oh God be praised. Now let's do that again, all right? We'll do that one more time, and then we'll go back and do the song from the very beginning. Oh, no problem. Holy Ghost, praise, praise the Father, praise the Son. Praise the Spirit now with us Every moment, all our days God be praised, oh God be praised All right, I think we're ready. Let's start from the very beginning. God, good morning, breaking light. 
face, God, when face to face we see. that when even in that song when it says about the one who had victory and rose from the grave that's about Jesus and that's the relationship that we have with with him and that's the relationship we have with you and and father and when we turn our lives over to you completely turn our lives over to you God be praised let you be praised father every single day no matter what it is that we are doing no matter what it is that we are going through God be praised father be praised all because of what Jesus did for us. All because of him dying on the cross for us. Raya, just taking our sins away and giving us that start. And may we never forget what he has done for us.
trust and you trust and you trust and you believe and you believe and you believe and you have faith and you have faith and you have faith and then you realize that all of these things that are coming to you are coming upon you are, are challenging you or stretching you or whatever the case may be you realize they're all coming from one place they're all coming from from God they're all coming from from Jesus they're all coming from the Holy Spirit and and when we go through all those things you trust in him you believe in him and it grows you even more So Friday, uh, Heather and I have been spending the days together because she doesn't work on Fridays. And, and so I got out of bed, and she looked at me, and she said, hey, I hope you're in a good mood. I said, okay. And she goes, um, uh, the oven's out. I said, oh. So I went out to the kitchen, and there's this error code up on the, the digital screen. And, and I'm like, all right. So I decided to call over to the uh, repair place over in Columbus that works on our ovens and, and so forth. And, and I said, hey, I got this code. Um, from what I can tell online, it's gonna, this, the whole screen electronics of our oven need to be replaced. 
And the guy said, well, let me get this to my boss. He'll review it, and then he'll give you a call. And I said, okay. So later on that afternoon, uh, we were at home, and, and they called. And they said, hey, Mr. Ross, yeah, this is so-and-so over at, at uh, Janair. And I said, yes. And they said, hey, we'd like to come take a look at that code. Are, is anybody there? And I said, come on over. Okay. So he comes over, and he goes, yeah, that whole thing probably is going to have to be replaced. And I said, yeah, I've been looking online, and if people have been paying upwards of $1,200 to fix that little piece of electronics that's right there. And he goes, some that I've replaced have been that much and others have been way cheaper. My boss will call you Monday with your estimate. Okay, I'm looking forward to that phone call tomorrow. But I also looked and I know it, it, these are wall microwave oven combos that are in there, and I was like, okay, if I don't want to pay 1200 bucks for this, I looked at Lowe's, and the minimum of buying something similar that fits that space is three grand. I'll, I'll, I'll find out what he has to say on Monday. Uh, but um, if you saw on Facebook um, uh, yesterday, I did something that was scary. For, for not everybody, not everybody would be scared of this. I was scared of this because I got, uh, Adam brought over one of these lifts uh, that is able to take me up to the top, almost to the top, almost, almost to the top of my fireplace because that's where the bats have been coming in. So I'm like, okay, we got to get, we got to fix this. And so I got on that lift and Adam was great because he kept saying the same thing to me the entire time that I was starting off and I put that harness on and and he goes okay when you're ready pull on this handle and it'll start to take you up okay go slow okay so I pull on the handle I'm slowly going up and then he goes okay I get to the very top of not almost to the very top of what far it could extend and then then it, it, it extends out and I'm up there and it, it, it it's not moving much but it moves a little bit you move your hand the whole thing kind of does this all right this is this is what I'm on and then Adam says this when you're ready flip that switch to have it extend out when you're ready Flip the switch, grab the handle, move it. I start to extend out, and I'm extending out, and I'm extending out, and I look back, and I see the fireplace still up there. I'm extending out. And then he goes, okay, when you're ready, I get up there. I'm close to where the fireplace is finally, and I have that that what you call it a harness i had that harness on that's attached to it and he goes okay just so you know you are not gonna fall you're gonna be fine he goes grab that that yellow thing and 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 pull it sideways so i grab it and i pull it and it, it, it locks i i put it back and then i pull it and i pull it behind me and it goes but if you jerk hard it, it locks he goes you're gonna be just fine i said okay he goes you're not gonna get hurt i'm like okay I didn't tell you this, Eric, before you got up there. When you're ready, turn around and stand on the rail to lean forward to put the insulation around your, your chimney. When you're ready, that was the longest part. That was the longest wait. Because I had to turn around and put my foot on this and then grab that and grab the can of insulation and put my foot on. To, and then I'm leaving forward and I'm, I'm just shooting the, the, the insulation into the, the, the chimney and it's all falling out because I'm, pu I'm pulling too fast. It's coming out too much. It's coming down the side. It's on the roof. And he goes, you need to pull the trigger slower. That way it stays there. I said, I'm just trying not to die. He goes, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. And I finally get it around there. 
And I stand back in, and he goes, okay, when you're ready, you can come back down. And I got all the way down. He looks at me, and he says, are you sweating much? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I am. I am. All right. Philippians, everybody. <laughs> Uh, woo. I, it really only went up 35 feet. I know that doesn't sound like, I mean, that's a lot. It was for me. In the book of Philippians, Paul is writing to the church, obviously, in Philippi. And he's hoping that they, they get the letter and they're open to what he's saying. He's hoping that they're going to be able to grasp this concept. And I've been I've been preaching since 93. And then everywhere I go we kind of run into the same issues. Now my life drastically changed 15 years ago. And you know that. Some of you know that story more than others because you've been here almost the 5 years that I've been here. But we have so much further to go. We have a lot of spiritual maturity that still needs to happen. And Paul is trying to address that with this church. He's hoping that they get what he's trying to tell them and apply it. For a long time now, I've been preaching about being a disciple, taking on the image of Christ, being Christ-like. And it's, it's a contract that you're, you're supposed to be in. We're all supposed to be in it. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's a contract. I'm going to be like Christ. I'm going to be like Christ. We're supposed to be changing constantly to be like Christ. We're supposed to be obviously moving in that direction. And when we get to chapter 2, it's kind of like where we can see where all of us need to change a little more. All of us. Chapter 2, starting in verse 1. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy compete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and in person. So that's basically what he's trying to get there. He's like, hey, listen, hey, what, the church, what you guys, what we all need to do, and, and all of us need to make sure that we're all following this. If you have any love and encouragement, if you have anything that you want to do and be a part of the body of Christ, make sure that you are like-minded and we're going to get to being more like-minded and being one in spirit and in purpose. One! See, the idea of being one is, is the concept that it's, it's not two. It's not mine and yours. It's not me and you. It's us. It's all of us being one in him. And it says this. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, 
but in humility consider others better than yourself. See, each of us should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility. See, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That the, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God our Father. How? By having the very nature of Christ, who, what did it say that he did? Humbled himself. He's. He's in heaven, sitting on the right hand of God. He is God's begotten son. He is the one that's in heaven. And, and, and when you look in John chapter 1, it says that all things were made through him. And so he was there from the very beginning of, of, of creation of everything. And he's God. God, uh, he's up there and, and they're, they're, they're together and they're one. And he decided that he was going to humble himself to the point becoming a human and living on this earth as a what? Said so in that list. A servant. God in heaven became a servant to serve us. To put him we need to put him in our way of life to make us humble to be a servant. He didn't have to do that. Actually, kind of did, didn't he? came here, was obedient to his parents, obedient to his mom. Jesus and Mary were at a wedding, and they ran out of wine. Do you remember the story? Mary looked at him and said, hey, hey, Jesus, they're out of wine. Why don't you go make some? Mom, it's not my time yet. Mom, I'm not supposed to be doing miracles yet. I'm not, it's, it's not the time that I'm supposed to do this, but because you're my mom, I'll go ahead and make the wine. Bring me jars of water. And they gave it to the bridegroom, and they gave it, and they said, this is the best wine ever. Even in humility, he served his mom at a wedding. We need to have the same love being one in spirit and in purpose. We need to be humble in what we do. Look at verse 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but how much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. I think we've lost that concept. I think we've lost that idea of, of how we're supposed to be, be working and how we're supposed to be, be, be serving and how we're supposed to be one in the Spirit. I think we've lost that concept, that idea of how we're supposed to be doing things because here it says, hey, you're supposed to work out your salvation with what? Two things. Fear and trembling. But you know what we hear out in the world? By other Christians, we hear all these things. Oh, Jesus is love. Yeah, he is. And, and, and I'm good just where I am. 
I don't have to do all these things because I, I'm one with him and Jesus is going to forgive me. We've lost that concept that you're supposed to be working it out in fear and in trembling. If you are fine and think you're satisfied with the status quo of where you are, we're in for trouble. Because we're supposed to be fearful and trembling in our relationship that we have with God. Because he's got things for us to do. It says so right there. And if you aren't obedient, if you aren't doing what it says in this, if you aren't living that way, if you aren't having the mindset of, of what it means to be a follower of Jesus and you think everything's good, it's not, we're in trouble. The status quo is not okay. Jesus is love. Don't get me wrong. He does love you. But just like he had a job to do, we do too. Then he goes on. 14. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I do not run or labor for nothing. It's kind of funny. Growing up with kids, teenagers, got a daughter who's 21. I have a son who's 19. And in high school, they both did this. They both complained about things. They complained about doing stuff. Hey, I told you to take the garbage out. Uh, you know, but then they complained about things. And I would say to them, I said, why are you complaining about this? Oh, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you how I feel. complaining I'm not complaining it's if you start a phrase off with I'm not complaining you're complaining thank you Cain who also complains all right that's from his mom Look at 17, but even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy back to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. For everyone looks out for his own interest, but not those of Jesus Christ. Whose interests? Their own interests. Not Jesus's. We, we're, we kind of fall in the same category here. We're, we, we are being corrupted by our, our society. We're being corrupted by, by everything around us that, that tells you that it's, it's you, you. You, you are most important. Uh, when we go to places and there's customer service and something doesn't go right, we go to the customer service and we complain. We pull up at, at, at Burger King and we say, I don't want mayonnaise or onions or tomatoes on my sandwich. And they give you a sandwich without money, uh, onions and tomatoes and, 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 and mayo or whatever it is that I said. And we say, no, no, it's about me. Our society is teaching us it's about me. What do I want? What, do, what, what is it that, that puts it in my interest? What, what about what I want? What about what I'm supposed to do? It's all about me. I went to Checkers one day after for lunch, and I pulled up, and the lady said, well, can I help you? And I said, yes, all I would like is your large loaded fry. And Mort is the one I think in, told me about their loaded fries are very good, and they really are. And so she said, okay, pull up. So I pulled up, and I'm sitting there. 
at the window. Five minutes goes by. Nothing. Ten minutes goes by. Nothing. Fifteen minutes goes by. Nothing. And I'm sitting there patiently, waiting them for them to bring me my french fries. And I finally, about 20 minutes, I go, on the window, nothing. I wait about another minute or so, and I knocked. And a lady comes around the corner, and she goes, can I help you? And she goes, oh, you're loaded fries, aren't you? And I said, yes, I am. And she goes, I am so sorry. She went, and she grabbed them, and she gave them to me, and she said, have a nice day. I got freeloaded fries. Because I waited. And waited. Okay? It's not about me. And he goes, Timothy, yeah, man, I can't wait to send him back to you. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him to uh, as soon as I see how things go with me, and I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come back soon. But I also think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphrodites, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because he, you heard he was ill. Indeed he was, and he almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him only, but also on me to spare me ser- sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and honor men like him because he almost died for the work of of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. Epaphrodites almost died for the gospel. And we have it so easy here in this country for right now. But it's coming. It's coming. I read an article this morning that a church in California was sued for $1.2 million by the government in California because they met on a Sunday during the COVID. It's coming. Laws are going through, uh, what was that about buying Bibles? No, you can't buy them in California. Making it a law. It's coming. Maybe, maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need some very difficult times for us to grow the way that we're supposed to spiritually, all of us. I just hope it's not yet. Chapter 2. Pray our ears and eyes have been opened. What are we supposed to do? What should we do to bring this unity to where we need to be? It starts with us, guys. Humbling ourselves. Putting each other first. Let's start. Uh, go ahead and start the music if if there's anybody here that needs prayer if anybody here needs wants to get baptized start fresh in him we'll fill the water this afternoon you can come back later 
this is the time that you need to reflect and I need to reflect. We all need to reflect on what we need to do to, to put him first. How do you change? Let's stand as we have our closing prayer. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy are you, Father, and worthy to receive praise and glory and power and honor. For by your will you create all things and they have their being. Father, I know that the elders and the angels say that in front of you all the time. They repeat it over and over and over and over and over again. But Father, it's so true. You are holy and you demand that each and every one of us become holy like you to put you first to say it's not our lives it's, it's what you want and how we can bring finally unity to this body to the, to the body of Christ Father I'm asking that you please just show us what we need to do keep showing us keep growing us and, and help us to seek you first before anything else study read, pray, and apply. Help us, Father, to do that. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us, and it's in your name that we pray.